All right. So here is our robot. Okay, he's a pretty simple form. Lots of cuboids and some cylinders. I know, I like saying that word too, cuboid. All right. So there's a couple ways to do this, right? You could, in theory, do one big rectangle for all of it, get the angles right, then subdivide that rectangle, you know, section by section. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is kind of build it a section at a time on up through the object. All right, so just keep in mind that I've only got one of these. I don't have a whole bunch, um, you know, like the car. So you won't be able to see this as I'm drawing it, but just know that this is the angle right here that I'm going to be drawing it from, okay? It'll just be off to the side here. So the first thing I'm going to do, obviously, is my anchor line way down here at the bottom. A nice, straight, horizontal line. Then I'm going to draw the rectangle for the feet. As you can see here, the feet are two squares that when stuck together consist of one long rectangular shape or form, I should say. So again, with the angle, I'm going to go a little wider than 90 degrees. Something like this, okay? Keep those opposing edges parallel. Like so. Okay. Now I'm going to subdivide it. Keeping that parallel with the others. That edge in parallel with the others. Into two sections like that. Now I'm going to go up straight vertically from each corner. I'm not going to go too far though. And I'm going to top off the box. Now the reason why I'm I'm going not very far up is because I have a bevel right here. See the bevel? So I'm going to go up and then I'm going to do another section, and I'm going to account for this tilting bevel right here. So, make sure I've got all my lines drawn. Make sure they're all pretty parallel. I'm going to go up. Now, you could go straight up and build another box and then tilt it. I'm going to do a little shortcut here, and I'm just going to tilt my lines a little bit. On the back as well. And the key to, to doing this is just making sure that all the tilted lines are parallel. I actually don't quite like that. I'm gonna go a little bit more angled. Like that. And then I'm going to draw a line across that way, keeping it parallel with the other parts of my box. I'm doing the same for the back edge there. The back edge is a little tricky because it's sort of coming at you. So this now accounts for the bevel on the feet. Now we want to start the legs. 
So if we look at this from the side, we can see that the, le the legs are pretty much aligned towards the back of the feet. There's more space up here than back here. So when I draw the boxes, I want them to be back here. So since I've already got this midline here, I'm going to just use that. and have that be the center. And then I'm just gonna kinda of draw a rectangle across. And there, now I now have two rectangles. It's getting a little tricky to keep my uh, angles even from where I'm drawing. Just got to do the best I can. All right, so now we're gonna go up for the legs. So we're gonna go straight verticals again, parallel with the edges of your paper. Straight up from the corners. like so. And I'm just going to kind of estimate looking at the object and saying, okay, this is about where the legs stop. Might be a little bit off, but close enough. So I draw the top of my box parallel with everything else I've got. Subdivide it, like so. So now I've got two rectangles next to each other, centered on the feet. Now I've got three sections of leg here. One, two, three. So I'm gonna subdivide those rectangle forms that I just made. And again, you're just gonna have to eyeball it so that they're all pretty equal. One, two, three. You are gonna have some occasions where lines overlap each other. Um, you're just gonna have to do the best you can and concentrate and make sure you are always drawing the right edge. Okay, we're gonna add our midsections again. So what we're left with are now six. They should be pretty equal um, squares. Are you with me so far? Yeah, okay. Now I'm going to subdivide those, find the midpoint. Horizontally and vertically. Now I'm going to draw my ellipses inside. And if I have done this correctly, I should be able to draw ellipses that are not only smooth and even with no lumps or points or anything like that. Remember, no footballs. They should all be the same size and they should all be aligned in the center. I should be able to draw a straight line through the center of these and have them be straight. If not, then you've done something wrong somewhere. You got to go back and backtrack through your steps and maybe redraw something. All right, as I draw these ellipses, I am 
ghosting, what's called ghosting my pencil. I'm already starting that circular motion before my pencil even hits the paper, right? And I am just touching the outer points of this square to give myself a nice, smooth, round ellipse, okay? Everything should be pretty equally spaced. And the top of one of these is going to be the bottom of the other, all right? So it looks like you might not have enough, but you will, all right? And then you're going to connect each of these ellipses with an arced line. One, two, three, one, two, three. Same on the other side. You can kind of lightly pencil these in because they're behind, but one, two, three. One, two, three. So now he's got those Michelin Man legs. You guys know who the Michelin Man is? Yeah. Okay, so, all right. There we go. That matches up. Now we're going to do the torso. Okay, note the torso tapers at the waist. It's thin and then it gets wider at the shoulders. And also note that the legs are kind of aligned towards the back of the torso. There's a little more space up here. He's got a little bit of a, you know, of a gut up there. Okay, too many tacos or something. It's kind of like my problem. All right, so from the back, I'm going to start another square. Give myself a little more room on the edges. And then come out a little further on the front than you need to. When I'm looking at the robot from this angle, almost this entire first um, row of segments is is overlapped. I don't even really see it from my viewpoint. So I wanna come out far enough so that that matches what I see somewhere out in here, okay? So something in that neighborhood is what I want. And again, if you need to go back and touch up a few of these things, you can. But you want to leave all of your foundation lines visible. Okay? Now, we're going to go up. But instead of going straight up, I am going to, again, kind of look at the object and tilt my lines just a little bit. Not a lot. So we're kind of contradicting ourselves now because normally I say go straight up vertically and keep your lines parallel. Now you're going to come up at an angle and now these two are going to be parallel with each other. And then you're going to do the same on this side except tilting the other way. And now these two are going to be parallel. You don't want to do it too much otherwise you're going to have this, you know, his shoulders are going to be huge and he's going to look weird. So somewhere in there should be good enough. Now this should be parallel with everything else. Now we're gonna draw the top of this cuboid form that's sort of, sort of like a parallelogram. I don't know what you'd really call it. Like so. Right? Now, we've got another bevel here. So I'm going to draw some more tilted lines. Now we've got the body of the robot. 
Now we're going to do the head is what I want. And again, if you need to go back and touch up a few of these things, you can. But you want to leave all of your foundation lines visible. Okay. Now we're going to go up. But instead of going straight up, I am going to, again, kind of look at the object and tilt my lines just a little bit. Not a lot. So we are kind of contradicting ourselves now because normally I say go straight up vertically and keep your lines parallel. Now you're going to come up at an angle and now these two are going to be parallel with each other. And then you're going to do the same on this side except tilting the other way. And now these two are going to be parallel. You don't want to do it too much, otherwise you're going to have this, you know, his shoulders are going to be huge and he's going to look weird. So somewhere in there should be good enough. Now this should be parallel with everything else. Now we're going to draw the top of this cuboid form that's sort of, sort of like a parallelogram. I don't know what you'd really call it. Like so. Right? Now, we've got another bevel here. So I'm going to draw some more tilted lines. Now we've got the body of the robot. Now we're going to do the head. So the head is centered. Find the midpoint here. Draw a line parallel that's parallel through the middle. Then I'm going to draw two more lines on either side because... There's a gap here for his shoulders on either side, so we want to account for that. So I've got a, a decent amount of room there for his shoulders. Now I come up straight this time, straight verticals from the corners of... The head. Now once again I top off my box keeping it parallel with everything else. I've got another bevel up here. Okay, so now all that's left is I've got ears and antenna on his head that I need to do. I'll come back to that. But first I want to get the arms um, worked out. Now the thing to note about the arms. You see that they're in three sections, shoulder forearm and then hand or claw and if you look at it from the front you'll notice that the the arms kind of go at an angle they don't go straight up and down they kind of the torso is going in a little bit but then the arms are coming out a little bit so when we draw our guidelines we want to come out at a slight angle once again so look at where the shoulder is where where you see that little gap right there so we're going to come down just below the bevel for the shoulder, and I'm just going to draw a little line right there, and I'm going to kind of center it. That's going to be the top of the arm. Now, not from this view, but from when I view it at an angle like this, 
You see how the hand comes down to the second leg segment, one, two, to almost the bottom? I want to put a line down there that corresponds with that second leg segment. That tells me how long the arm needs to be. You with me? All right. Now I'm just gonna draw a faint line. That's approximately the angle that I'm observing for the arm. And here's the part that's a little tricky. Now you are going to draw a box shape, more like a rectangular form that is parallel on the top and bottom to everything else, but the sides are going to now follow this line, this little axis line that I have set out for myself. Right? Just like that. Sure, I really get those lines parallel. Okay. Now this is going to be my arm shape. I'm going to subdivide it now. I've got the shoulder here. The arm is going to come in a little bit. It's a little bit smaller in thickness. So I'm actually going to come inside and draw that inside, a little bit smaller than everything else. Now finally I have the claw, and the claw of the robot goes out, it tapers out a little bit. So that's why this object is tricky, because you got lots of tapers and things coming out. You just gotta kinda know how to eyeball that stuff. So I'm going to get a little bit bigger with this and come out like so. And with a little bit of tweaking, I now have one arm. The one th other thing to note about the arms is that you see how, looking at it from the front, there's a line that comes down. You can almost visualize the rest of the arm being inside the robot. So I'll just need to account for that here and just kind of draw a line parallel to the edge of this here to show that you know, the rest of the shoulder is inside. Well, it's not really inside, it's cut that way, but for drawing purposes, you can just pretend it's on the inside. Got the little claw here, project through to the other side. Remember we draw through the forms. Okay, so there's one arm. But remember, whatever we do on one side, we gotta do to the other. So now the tricky part is just projecting our lines through to the opposite side it's better to do like the top and the bottom first draw our angle and from this angle I'm just seeing like a little sliver of the hand like that the rest of its all behind the torso but if you, if you did this correctly, you should be able to just project the lines through like that and then figure out where everything goes without too much effort.
like that. Okay. Now, all that's left are the fine details. All right. Again, we've got the antenna up here. We've got the ears. And then we've got like the face and the chest and stuff. These are all flat details. They don't have their shapes not formed. So we will just be drawing these shapes on the top of um, our, which is on the surface basically. All right, so we find the midpoints here, here. Draw a smaller box in the center of our little plus sign. Draw our ellipse. Now what we're gonna do is curve those lines to give the illusion of three-dimensional form. Project through to the other side. Same box on the other side, same ellipse, okay? We've got our eyes now. Just kind of space those out. They're square, so they're pretty easy to draw. We've got one eye there, one eye there. We've got our mouth, which is even in width to the eyes. We have four segments there, so subdivide it one, two, three, four. Oops. Our antenna up here, we're just gonna draw a flat plane through the center. Subdivide it into three sections. One, two, three. There's our antenna. Then we have, you know, our Our bolts. We've got an ellipse here. Find the midpoint. Again, a nice smooth ellipse. No footballs, no pointy ends. And then we have, you know, some more circles. I guess they're supposed to be bolts or something, I don't know. All right, so the last step, of course, is tweaking any edges, making sure everything's parallel, tweaking your line quality, making sure everything is accurate. And you know, your, your, your structure lines, your construction lines can be faded, but they should still be, be there. You should be able to see everything. Remember the show your math analogy. I don't want to see just the final solution. I want to see how you got there. So, any questions about anything? Pretty straightforward, right? All right, there's our robot, more or less. All right.